Travolti presents The Fraser's Edge. Hosted by Jeff Sweeney and Stuart Elmore. Covering Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. Enjoy the episode. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Stuart. I'm I'm not really doing yeah, so I'm, hot right I'm now. Not yeah. feeling my number one right now. I'm kind of kind of on the down. Low. Yeah, I'm down in the dumps. I'm feeling a little depressed. Yeah. Like, it, what's the point? If only. What's th- the point of us coming here every other Sunday and talking about these movies of Brendan Fraser? If only there was something we could do. You something know, we could take. If only we had some. What would you even call it? Like, if we had some brain candy. That's right, no! folks. Well, welcome Whoa! back to Travolta Presents the Fraser Match. Uh, that's right. This week we are covering the motion picture Kids in the Hall Brain Candy, an offsuit feature length film of the Kids in the Hall comedy group, which I have never seen before. Yeah. And I only recognize one of the people. Are, are you confused on who these people are? Think, think of a Canadian SNL. They're not even close. <laughs> no, like, it's a very successful group. They were very yes. well beloved in the 90s. They recently had a comeback. Um, that yeah, they I, did. I heard really good things about. Yeah. Um, this movie is produced by Lauren Michaels. You know, he had some involvement in them, as he did with um, um, SNL. Yeah. Um, and I just missed that cultural moment. Yeah. Uh, they were big in the 90s. They ran through... Um, they ran from 18, 1989 to 1995... And then they made this movie as like a feature length ending ending yeah. of it. They made um, multiple little like tours, festivals, and mini series between 1995 and 2010. Uh, and then they did not do anything, um, a major note, until 2022 when they reunited in a show that came out this year. Yeah, Disney Amazon Prime. Season, yeah, Amazon Prime. Perfect timing for us to cover this. Yes. Um, it's just, if you notice, they basically were gone from 1995 to 2022. Yeah. Which is my entire lifespan. Yes. <laughs> which is <laughs> it's why, my entire lifespan, which is too. Which is why we just missed, like, this isn't, like, us not knowing anything is not a discredit to their group, their comedic prowess or whatever. Right. It is simply a discredit to the fact that we were not alive during their moment, missed that cultural moment, and I watched this movie and I'm like, I don't know who these people are. Right. But now they're back. Do I seem ignorant? Probably. Um, can I apologize? But I, I missed this. Well, yeah. I think you put it very well that they are like a, a super high acclaimed group yeah. in Canada. Canadia. Um, Canadia. Canadia. Uh, featuring David Foley, which is a name you might recognize. Uh, Bruce McCulloch, uh, Kevin McDonald, Mark McKinney, and Scott Thompson. It was uh, pretty much the brainchild of those five yeah, th- those were the five guys. Those were the five guys that were the kids in the hall, you might say. They were, they were in fact, kids in the hall. Yeah. So, uh, with with that being said, um, th- this is like, a, you know, where, like any comedy show in like the 90s, this is where they, they stop doing the show, but instead they allocate the resources into a feature film yes which as we know jeff is always a great source of yes. resources and has never gotten wrong for any other group that has tried this effect i bring your attention to mighty Morphin power rangers <laughs> in the 90s where they made the ooze uh feature film well this is it's kind of a it's a thing that a lot of you know comedy shows do or it's like it's the it's the community thing six seasons in a movie yes uh, and they're finally making the community movie apparently yeah, but like community was always six seasons in a movie. Um, even going back to the sixties, the monkeys. Um, the monkeys started off um, as a TV show, music yeah. group, and then they made their movie Head, and that was kind of just the craziest movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, same thing with Kids in the Hall. They made their TV show. Um, they finished it up, and they made Brain Candy as the uh, the kind of uh, coup de gras, the end of it. And is it the coup de gras? Um, look. <laughs> do i think this movie is inherently unfunny no i think i just don't know who these people are i don't know what the style of humor their style of humor is and so a lot of the jokes get lost on me i, I do have to agree a lot of the humor of this movie comes from you knowing who these people are yes it's like and like knowing their relationships to each other. It's like imagine I want you to imagine this. Imagine you get a movie with uh, Will Ferrell, um, 
uh, you, you're going to get Will Ferrell. You get, like, essentially, think of... Um, um, the Anchorman. Yeah, think of Anchorman. The Anchorman. Right. Think of the those four guys: uh, Paul Rudd, uh, Will, Will Ferrell, Ferrell uh, um, David Kochner, Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Yeah, you get these four guys together, and it's like they're funny on their own, so the movie yeah. holds up. But imagine if like you didn't know who any of these guys were, and you put the four of them in the movie, and there's no context into what they're doing, but they're just doing their own. Yeah. Thing. Now I know that sounds kind of hard to fathom, but like, do you imagine Paul Rudd being this like likable guy? He's just like, look at yeah. us. Who would have thought? Not yeah. me. But you don't have any context into what that yeah. means. It's kind of hard to laugh at it. Yeah. Same with Steve Carell, this guy who's like in real life really smart, but his TV characters are normally like stupid. Yeah. It's hard to laugh at it when you don't know Steve Carell is doing Steve Carell. So like I think that's kind of the issue we have with Kids in the Hall Brain yes. Candy. It's it's it David Foley is doing a David Foley thing, but I don't know who well, David Foley Dave is. David Foley's the one who I know and I actually found his parts, his characters the most entertaining. Um for me. But you know a lot of it is like, you know, Mark McKinney um and well, does a lot of like drag in this movie. He dresses up as a lot of women. Well, that's that's the whole shtick in their yeah. TV series. Yes. A lot of them dress up as women. Yes. Yeah. But you know what either of us have seen the TV series. Right. And so that's the inherent... uh, So seeing them in drag is not inherently funny to us. This is us, you know, coming up with a lot of reasons to explain to you, the audience, why we're probably just going to be like, yeah, this thing happens and this will be a 35-minute episode. Pretty much. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm sure for Kids in the Hall fans, this is... uh, They like this. Yeah. I'm sure this is a good movie for them. I I went into a little deep dive research into this only because, like like what you said, Jeff, I didn't really know who these people were and I wanted to look up a little bit of research behind them. And so I looked up uh, this movie's directed by Kelly Macon, who has been like a longtime collaborative director for the kids in the hall group yeah. since the, you know, imagining other TV show in the nineties. But she's also been with them throughout the whole, whole year. She's been with them since like the 2010 reboot as well. as the 2022 reboot as a consulting yeah. director. So she's been, she's kind of like a person who like doesn't really get in their way is what it seems like yeah. her, her relationship is because with any of these ensemble comedy groups, even if there is a director attached, you kind of know that the actors are sort of running yeah. the show more or less. And that's why they have like these collaborative directors that they work with a lot because yeah. they know how to corral like the improv and whatnot. That's why Adam McKay works with Will Ferrell a lot. Yeah. Or did work with Will Ferrell a lot. Yeah. Did a falling out apparently. It's very sad. Um, Is it really? Was it really a falling out? With yeah. That? I, I don't they know. had a falling out over some TV show where Adam McKay told Will Ferrell he'd have a role in it but then he cast John C. Riley in the role instead oh. but then like didn't call Will Ferrell to let him know. Oh. That he had replaced him. Oh, and so they had like a falling out. I'm like, I want just make Anchorman three guys. Come on. Well, of all the things you could have done, casting John C. Riley as his replacement is kind of a low blow. Yeah, Step Brothers. Um, good movie. It's Prestige like, Worldwide. Prestige Worldwide. Um, um, I don't really have any other context into this. Yeah, I mean that's that's the extent of the context when it comes to the Fraser of it all. Um, uh, uh, yeah, this is a Fraser's Edge podcast. I forgot. This is a Fraser's Edge podcast, which we simply have to acknowledge. Yeah. So then, where where does Fraser fall along with this? Well, I know where he does, but yeah, I mean this is this is a uh, Fraser's. You know, he's Canadian. We've discussed this. <laughs> is he really Canadian? Well, he was born in Indianapolis. But he was born to Canadian parents and spent a lot of time in Canada. He is listed as a Canadian American actor. Okay, I bl- we've discussed this. For me, he's always going to be a Hoosier. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you're a Hoosier. Because I'm a Hoosier, yeah. and Brendan Fraser was. Yeah, I'm to be Brendan James Fraser was born in Indianapolis and he had a Canadian parents. He holds dual Canadian and American citizenship. Yes, he went to school in Toronto, attended Upper Canada College. You know, he's he's got it. He's yeah, Canadian. He's got the card. Yeah. He's got the card. He's punched it. He's a Canadian. He's a rising star at the time. Yeah. This is a big Canadian comedy group. Want to throw a little want to throw a little Canadian boy in there, you know? You know what this reminds me of? What? This reminds me of those episodes of How I Met Your Mother when Robin Sherbatsky is telling the group about what she was in Canada. And it's always about like, yeah, like the 90s didn't really hit the the Canada until like the mid 2000s. Mm-hmm. 
it kind of has those same vibes yeah. where it's like you imagine Brendan Fraser in a room with all of his actor stars. Yeah. And he's like, Fraser, what what was your 1996 like? It's like, oh, boy, man. <laughs> I was in this crazy movie called Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. They're like the SNL of Canada, man. Yeah. And they all just look at him kind of funny like, who? And they're like, oh, Kids in the Hall? Guys, come on. But like, here we are. <laughs> so I imagine Brendan Fraser is living the life of his dreams. Yes, I'm sure, th- I'm sure he's very happy in this. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he has a small role in this, but he does commit. He, <sighs> like, he, has extent, he has extensive prosthetic work on him in that scene. This was not a pop in for 20 minutes and shoot a scene kind of deal. Yeah. Like, he he went to the makeup trailer. He had a pre-call. He got that makeup <laughs> on. He went. He reported the set. He reported the set. He did a scene. Yeah. And then you know what? He did another scene. Was it he very briefly in that next scene? Yes. But he did two scenes. He did two scenes. Yes. I always saw the Lord. When the... I'm just going to say this out of context because it will be very funny for the audience who have not seen this movie. Um, the part where they're in the scientific lab, all <coughs> the 50 gay people run out uh, fully nude. The last one coming out is Fraser holding a rat cage. Oh. Yeah, and then he runs off. I totally missed that bit. Yeah, it's really brief, but he's there. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do we just want to dive into the... Uh... Yeah, there is no plot. I mean, no, there is a plot. There is a plot. There is, like, a loose plot. There's a very loose plot to basically build a lot of, like, sketch bits. Yeah. Like, this movie's a lot of skits that are strung together by a plot. Yeah. The plot's about an antidepressant. Yeah. Called Gleam. Anyway, that was our... <laughs> <laughs> oh, good no. job. Good job, everybody. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it... it it, the whole opening is is trying to like fit you in this world of like depression. Everybody's yeah. sad. Everybody's sad. Nobody's happy. Yeah. We get like a nightclub metal I, rock band. I do simply want to say, yes. opening shot of this movie very impressive. It is a little <laughs> bit because it, it it's a helicopter well, shot. No, it starts inside of a uh, a store of a homeless guy coming up and looking through the glass. Yeah. And then it goes through the glass mm-hmm. outside a taxi cab. Um, calls the homeless guy like a bum and tells him to get out of there. Then we start following the taxi. Then we rise into the sky. Yeah, and then it turns, a hel- into, some... it turns into a helicopter. We go- we follow the taxi. We go over like three buildings, and then we come back in through the front door of a nightclub. I want to know how they did that shot. It's very impressive. It is very impressive. I wrote that down too. I'm like, what is this opening shot? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a helicopter shot, but then it's like shaky cam. Yeah. I don't know. But from that, we basically just get a bunch of little vignettes of stories that we'll be checking back in with throughout the movie. Yeah, we um like we see like you mentioned the rock, the death metal club. Yeah, um, where this guy's performing, and then he like just gets too depressed to continue performing. He's like, "Fuck this!" and walks off into the audience. Is like, "Yeah, yeah! <laughs> that's our motto." <laughs> yeah, because um, uh, it's so metal to not finish your show. There's I mean, uh, a family, and there's a dad who yeah, is like jacking two, off to gay porn. Yeah, it's a dad. He's jacking off to gay porn. He says, and the kids are downstairs. The mom walks in the front door. She's like, what's your father doing? And it's they're like, like, upstairs, masturbating to gay porn again. Uh, and they're like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. And then the dad comes down, and he's like, oh, no, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> it's pretty okay, funny. His storyline <laughs> is the best part of this movie. Oh, my God. It actually is The story is of the good. dad is actually oh, very funny. It actually is really good. <laughs> like Private, his, we're going to... You're going to go upside down and give me 50 push <laughs> Like the, the, the structure of his storyline in this movie is it's this dad played by... Which of them plays him? Oh, my God. Um, I don't know. Oh, Lord. It's one of the five, isn't it? Well, no shit. It's one of the five. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's one of the five guys. I'm like, uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, it, I think it's uh, Kevin McDonald. I'm going to confirm this before I besmirch. <laughs> Anything. I'm pretty sure. No, it's not Kevin McDonald. Kevin McDonald's the main guy. No, well, Kevin There's, McDonald plays the main Chris guy. Cooper. And he plays. Oh, I guess it's Chris's dad. Yeah, get your shit together. Well, then it's Scott Thompson. I'm confirming. My God. I'm almost positive it's Scott Thompson. Yes, it's Scott Thompson. You're correct. Because Mark McKinney plays the drill sergeant. Yes. Okay, so it's uh, Scott Thompson. It's he's like, really hard to figure out yeah. who's playing who with this. Because he's the dad. Okay, so he's a dad. Um, he's cl- in the closet, but he doesn't know he's in the closet. Right. Is the joke of the movie. Right. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> and um, throughout the movie, everyone, like, even his wife and his kids are like, you're gay, <laughs> just be gay. And he's like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> if you think this is problematic, folks, you've seen nothing yet. <laughs> this movie takes a lot of different steps into problematic uh, waters here. Cancer boy. <laughs> oh, can- Cancer boy's a little funny. He's, he's a good guy. Cancer boy's really funny. Um, <laughs> I oh. laughed at a lot of bits that I should not have laughed you at. You watched this on YouTube, I presume. I did, did I. at 360 360p. 360p. Quality. Were you also caught off guard multiple times by attack ads from Tulsa King? No, I have YouTube Premium, oh, well, so I, I don't have ads. I kept. I was watching this, and like scenes would cut off mid sentence. Like you'd be like, "Oh, how are you, <laughs> Tulsa King?" <Yeah. laughs> so Stallone would be like, hey, "Get back up, huh?" <laughs> I'm like trying to skip ad. <laughs> I yes, like, hey, what's I, uh, the matter? I have YouTube premium for folks who are wondering. You should get it. It's much better. I can't stand YouTube with ads. That's my I, TED talk. I used to have YouTube premium and then I canceled it. Why? Because I don't watch YouTube that much. Oh, I watch YouTube all the time. I have a life. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, so we see all these little <coughs> vignettes. What else? What else? We we catch up with. Um, well, I feel like then we get to the depression project. Yeah, the depression project, which is which is this pharmaceutical company's underground bunker. Yes, uh, where we have like the main five. Yeah, one of them is playing a depressed old woman. Yes, oh, um, oh, Mrs. Herdicure. Oh, just which is just oh, rhymes with hard. That's the sound she makes like halfway like throughout most of the movie. Uh, Kevin McDonald plays like the main scientist named Chris. Chris yes. what? Chris Cooper. Cooper. Chris There's no Cooper. relation to the to the acclaimed actor. Right. Um and so they're coming up with like a cure to depression and they give Miss Heidecker um this pill that unlocks her happiest memory and her happiest memory is when it was Christmas and her son came to visit for like one minute, one minute, and then left. It's like this. There, it's like it cuts inside of her head. It yeah. Starts on a clock, and it's like eleven fifty nine. Yeah. And she opens the door, and her son walks in with like fifteen kids. Right. And they all run around there, and we. Just, it's just one they steady cam shot, tracking with the dad. He walks into the kitchen, takes a drink, and then he comes back. And he's like, "All right, kids, time to go." <laughs> and all the kids run out with their presents, and they give her a harmonica. And she's like, that was such a nice visit. Yeah. And the way uh, a lot of people uh, kind of brush off their grandparents. Yeah. Tragically. Um, but it's her happiest memory. Yes, it's her happiest memory, which is kind of sad. <laughs> That's very sad. It's very sad. It's a lot of people's, like, it's a whole bit with this movie. Yeah. It's like a lot of people's happiest memory is like a very sad memory. Yeah, it's very sad. It's a very <laughs> depressing moment. Yeah. Uh, so, but they think they have it. And yeah. so, but we cut to upstairs. Yeah, the board. And it says, uh, Don is coming. Yeah. Who's Don? Trump. Donald. <laughs> right. No. It's, ba- it's it's very much a Donald Trump spoof. He's kind of doing a Trumpy thing. He, he's talking he, like... He, he talks like Dr. Evil. He's talk. Yeah, he does. I, I can't even do it. How do you Mr. do it? Mr. Powers. Yes, it's really how he does. He talks exactly Mr. Powers. like this. It's like, what other what other ideas do we have for the... for the You know, that, that could top the stummies. Um, yeah. he's stummies. Like, he he's made. the CEO of this company. He was a former drug scientist who invented this thing called stummies. Which does what? We never get that. Nope. But it's <laughs> we do get a fun little sequence where, like, they're waiting... For the word about what color socks he's wearing, right? Really lights of the helicopter, and they figure out it's red socks. Yes, and everything on the floor is decorated in blue. So they have to. Ch- so they have to like change all the decorations in thirty seconds before his elevator reaches their floor. Yeah, and so like there's a gu- two guys pushing a red rug as a, as another guy like rolls up the blue one. Yeah, it's a fun sequence. It's cute. Yeah, but then he arrives. And he's like, "We gotta get more power. We gotta get." More money. We gotta increase our sales. Sales are down. Sales are down. We gotta cut some costs. We're gonna cut R and D by sixty percent. So, uh, what what ideas do? How how are we doing well now? Yeah. Oh, uh, how are we doing with that? The thing that you just announced right now. We're on top of that, Don. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a str- it's a really strange scene because he's like, we need to cut R and D by sixty percent, and then we cut around and Morgan Freeman's there unexpectedly. <laughs> he's like, what do you mean we'll cut an R and D? And then he turns, didn't you get the memo? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's the Batman Begins scene. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, we are cutting the R and D department. Martin Freeman's like, 
What do you mean? And uh, cuts back around. He's like, didn't you get the memo? The pe- to the, the yes, audi- I understand. To the audience I understand. who laughed when I, I said that. Thank the you. Joke, it You're the real funny. ones. You're the real ones. It wasn't You're funny. You're the real ones. It wasn't funny. <laughs> it, wasn't funny. <laughs> it really wasn't funny. You know what funny. else wasn't funny? What? Uh, some parts of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Um, there, I won't th- say the whole movie, but some of it. So then, as that's happening, we cut back to this the lab, and that's where we're 16 minutes and 52 seconds. Yes. Into this movie, they're testing on patients. Yes. And they're we're we're tracking down this row of patients trying yeah. these pills until we get to the last person in line. And who is it, Jeff Sweeney? Brendan Fraser. Fraser. That's right. He's there. Yep. He's they one of the They try and patients. give him the pill. He's like covered in like sores and like scratches yeah. and shit. He doesn't look very good. Yeah. He's like, you guys have been giving me all this shit and nothing's been helping. He's you- kind of doing a, he's kind of doing an accent. He sounds kind of like this. I didn't really he's get that. He's kind of doing that. a voice. I didn't really get that. He's like, you guys, you put me in the placebo group, didn't you? You put me in the placebo group. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really get that, but yeah. Um, and so he's like, I, I'm not taking the pills. I'm not taking the pills. And it's like. Ah, they throw the pill down his throat. Throw the pill down his throat. Uh, literally 30 seconds besides this yeah. second bit that I missed. Um, yes. That was really quick. It's funny. It's kind of nice. Um, And then there's. The... Fraser continues to prove that he is good at comedic timing. Yeah. Uh, we cut back to the upstairs where there's. Well, hair, hair, hair. Oh. Uh... I don't remember. It's 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 his normal. It's literally just his normal hair because he it's his, this is a one day job. Okay, here's the list. Put it put it hair in. ranking. Cue the music. All right, all right. Thank you. welcome to the hair ranking. Stuart's about to just throw this on. Put it up. Put it uh. Put it above. Dog fight below. Child of darkness. Child of light. <laughs> remember when we covered child of darkness. Child <laughs> of light. Uh yeah, that was a while ago. It was our first episode. On this series. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that was our, the hair ranking, I suppose. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then um, we... W- Don's assistant, who is played by... Dave Foley. Dave Foley. Marv. Who Marv. looks like... Dave Foley looks like David Spade. Yeah, he does. It, keeps th- it really kept throwing me off. He's like, hey, Dr. Cooper, do you have five minutes? That's like the joke for this movie. Yeah. And it, then I'm comes gonna... out, he's like, Dr. Cooper, I just need five minutes of your time. And it turns out he, like, gets taken away for, like, years. And then I'm terribly sorry to say, like, um, that I mostly know Dave Foley uh, as the voice of Flick from A Bug's Life. He's the main ant. Oh, right, yeah. And, like, I, that's what I mostly know him for. We will actually be seeing him again on this podcast, though. No shit. Yes, we will see him again. I mean, he, he's a successful actor. He, does, yeah. he did a lot of things. Uh, he's the yeah. most successful of the group outside of the realm of Kids in the Hall. Right. Uh, yeah. So we'll see him again. Uh, he's playing Marv, the assistant. <clears throat> and like the ne- basically the next sequence is every R&D project gets cut because they're not ready to ship. Right. And our main character, Chris Cooper... Um, he gets brought up to the floor. Yeah, and he and- lies and says that the product, the antidepressant, is ready to ship to save his department. Yeah. And so they start shipping... His pill that's which they named Gleemanex. Gleemanex. Glee money. Um, yeah. Gleemanex. Um, they start shipping it. Uh, they change the color from blue to orange because it tests better. Yeah. And then the rest of the movie proceeds as such. Yeah. Uh, I do think uh, best character in this movie is Don. He's really, yes. I really enjoy him every time he appears and starts talking like this. Yeah. We're having our, um, here's like a family baptism is happening in the office right uh, now. It's my, it's my, sh- it's my nephew's brish. Why are you here during my nephew's brish? Can't you see we're having my nephew's brish? Like he came, yeah. that was a really funny pit in the yeah. movie. Um, I wrote, I literally wrote down after the board meeting scene where they approve the Gleemanix. I'm not really paying attention to any of this. Yeah. Because after a while, it just took so hard for me to like pay attention. All right, then my next note after that is cancer boy in all caps. <laughs> 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 Ghetto children. <laughs> He's like, well, we got no. This is what happens is Don is like, we have to approve it for non-prescription, you know, so the ghetto children can have some. I yeah. hear the ghetto children aren't very happy in these days. And I'm like, <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's funny. It's it's a it's a good pair. I 
all the stuff with Don I really enjoy because I always enjoy over the top caricatures of the rich yeah and powerful right that like he's just like I hear that like he doesn't understand what ghetto children are. He's right. just like, I hear they're unhappy. We need to give them Gleam and X and make money. Right. Um, there, there's a good bit. I can't remember who it is, but someone, when they see their, their best memory, it's, um, it's like them as a child uh, fixing a bike out front and, the dad, and their dad comes home. He's like, hey, son. Did you clean the house while daddy was at work? He's like, yeah. He's like, did you clean the gun while daddy was at work? Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> he tells the son, say, and then he walks inside and he's like, <laughs> my foot, <laughs> my other foot. And we cut back to regular and the person who was thinking about that memory is like, yeah, about two hours later, he found a vital organ and he succeeded at killing himself. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. It's just like this vision of this guy standing there trying to shoot himself for two hours and missing every time. That's a good bit. It's a good it's bit. It's a pretty good bit. There's some good bits. And then it's the dad, yeah. the gay dad who takes a pill and yeah. he remembers at boot camp where his drill sergeant is yelling at him. It's like, Private, you're going to do like 50 push ups today, all right? And he's like, Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> and he's like, Why are you smiling? And it's like, uh, sorry, sir. And he's like, you're going to do it upside down. I'm going to do 50 push-ups on top of you. And they're just being very, very over the top about it. Homoerotic about it. But then he takes the pill um, and he realizes that he is actually gay. And he comes downstairs and he's like, I'm gay. And the kids and the mom like, wife yeah. are like, yeah. And they walk around. There's a whole musical there's number. There's a musical number of him walking down the street. We are not lying when we say yeah. this, guys. Uh, yeah. He's like, I'm gay. He's gay. Everyone's like, he's gay. He's gay. He's gay. He's gay. He's gay. He's gay. They laughed. They scoffed until they had left off. And yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, but then, but here's. I think you will agree with me when I say this. Yeah. All of the skit stuff in this movie is pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because like it's kind of it's more based in like universal comedy tropes. Right. The main storyline doesn't really work. No. It's both like just like not that engaging, but also a lot of it is based on the personalities of these char- of these actors, right. of these comedians. Yeah. Which is something I don't know. Yeah. So it's hard for me to lock into that point. But whenever right. the movie cuts away from the central, you know, idea and goes into these skit segments, that's when I found myself really vibing with it and enjoying watching this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but it doesn't happen enough. Yeah. Or maybe it just doesn't have enough for me who doesn't know the kids in the hall. I mean, it's the same thing for me. Yeah. Um, I sort of stopped taking notes on this movie because after a while I was just sort of yeah. either not paying attention to the central through arc or I was like enamored by some of like the individual bits. Yeah. Like Don, I would agree. Don like, was great. Don's bits are pretty funny. Like I like Don's bits. I like all the stuff with the, uh, the gay dad. Yeah. I like all the business with... Cancer Boy. Cancer Boy. <laughs> Cancer Boy's pretty funny. Cancer Boy's pretty funny. <laughs> You know, that was like there. I know I told you not to read the IMDb trivia thing because yeah. of something I want to show you later. But like one of the IMDb trivia things was like Cancer Boy was something that one of the executive producers was like fucking adamant on like you have to take it out because he actually had a loved one who yeah. had cancer and died. And he was like, you're taking this out of the movie. But all the 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 guys, the kids in the hall, they were like, no, it stays in because it's a reflection on how people take advantage of sick kids yeah. for their fame and it's like no you're not keeping in but like we're, yeah. we're keeping in there so what the executive producer did is he changed it from a wide release to a limited release and yeah. that was partly what led to it flopping yes so and and brain candy was one of those it was like what you said six seasons in a movie it was the movie that tanked their you know the longevity of kids yeah. in the hall for a while and then they came back but like it was still like one of those things where like it's break- like they weren't they didn't break through to the mainstream cinema right yeah no and it certainly didn't help their yes. continuation prospects because um, I'm sure had this movie been a success there would have been more kids in the hall movies <laughs> kids in the hall movies and more Instead kids in the hall just, seasons and like they still continued like touring and doing comedy shows after this yeah but um there there wasn't another movie it's like you know. I was trying to think like Reno nine one one right uh, to show that got a movie and the movie didn't do well so they didn't make another movie right they just ended up doing more seasons of TV somewhere down the line yeah Simpsons movie odd example doing very well but they haven't made a sequel yet right um but yeah um I'm just gonna kind of speed through the rest yeah. of this but okay. like the drug has a side effect where people take 
take it and then they get into a coma. Yeah, just being stuck in their happiest memory. And so then the pharmaceutical company has like this bunker full of like coma patients. Yeah. <laughs> And they start ha- they start selling and marketing this uh, comatose yeah. hotel. Yeah. For, so families can make ship- m- money off of their. This movie's a parody of Big Pharma. Yeah, it so is. It's like instead of fixing the problem, they decide they're going to make money off of off it. the problem that they yeah, created. created. Yeah, it's, it's Purdue Pharma, um, which they predicted. <laughs> we do have to talk about Cancer Boy though. Oh no. How he fits in the movie. Yeah. Um, because there's we see um. How this is a f- how this drug affects all the the characters who we saw throughout the movie. Yeah, and the two big ones who we see in the middle of the movie are Cancer Boy and then the uh, the rock death metal rock star. Yeah, um, who becomes like a country perform <laughs> like a soul performer. Yeah, because the 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 it's funny because the um we when we go back to the death metal nightclub a few times and like the third time we go back to it the the depressed rock singer it's like all right. I got a drug out there for you. And they're like, heroin. It's like, yeah. it's not heroin. Speed. speed. It's not speed. speed. Hashish. It's not like, even hashish. hashish. It's like, it's a uh, Gleaminix. Yeah. And then and he, I like, got a song for you. He pulls an acoustic guitar. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's and they're like, oh no, he's on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's one of those good vets. He's like, he's yeah. the sellout artist. Yeah. He finds happiness and it ruins his art. Yeah, it ruins his, but he does win a Grammy. He does win a Grammy. You know who else wins a Grammy? <laughs> who won? Cancer Boy. Cancer Boy. For his whistling record. Yes. Oh, God. Cancer Boy is just one of them in a wheelchair um, looking like a leukemia patient. Yeah. Paste white with no hair. Yeah. Just being like, yeah, I'm going to die soon. <laughs> He's like, like, oh, are you taking it, Cancer Boy? It's like, oh, no, I'm not taking it. My parents, who are sad that I'm going to die, are taking it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my He's God. He's like, There's not, there, I'm terminal. There's not, I'm inoperable. There's nothing they can do for me. Like, my parents are sad over me. They're also sad over my brother, who was born with his heart on his outside of his body. <laughs> so, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Again, like, yeah. these individual bits. Very but, funny. But Cancer Boy wins a, wins a Grammy. I'm happy for he him. He does. He does win a Grammy. Uh, all right, how does this movie end? Um, well, Chris Cooper realizes it. He tries to have a press conference, but they announce the hotel instead. Right. There's a really good like bit of background comedy that I like here, where it's like Marv Dave Foley like brings Chris Cooper to see Don. Yeah. And he's like, Don, we'll see you right here. I shall take my leave. And he gets in the elevator, but it's like an elevator with like um, it's chain link instead of a metal door. And so you just see Dave Foley as the elevator rises, crouching lower and lower to still try and be in this conversation until he's laying on the floor in the elevator as it goes up. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed that bit. Um, um, we do get another Fraser cameo when he goes down to the Chris Cooper goes down to the Depression Project again. Yeah, and uh, that's when all the people run out having had sec- a big orgy with um, Wally, our gay father. Yeah. Um, and Fraser's the last one to run out. And he's carrying a mouse cage. Yeah. For some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's our last Fraser appearance. Uh, but the end is this at this big press conference where mm-hmm. they're announcing the hotel. And Chris Cooper gets back at Don by throwing, by getting Don he to take a He throws a pill, pill at, at his throat. Yeah, he gets Don to take a pill. And he's like, well, that's not good. Um, and then it cuts to black. And we pick back up with this Croatian cab driver. Who's been in the movie a few random times? He's just talking about like how grumpy he is. Well, he says it's like that didn't really do it anything. Didn't do anything. Everyone still takes Gleemanix. Everybody's happy now. I'm the only son of a bitch in the world left. Yeah, but then it's another underground bunker where they're testing on the same Miss yeah. Heidecker. Hard, hard, hard to cure. Hard to cure. Hard to cure. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. man, I totally just now got I that. I literally said that at the beginning of this episode. I, uh, yeah. Oh, my anyway, Lord. Uh, but she's like tra- trapped in her little comatose, happy state. They're like, all right, guys, I think we found the cure to happiness. Yeah. And it's this little blue pill. Blue pill that they will put down the her to cures. Or will you take the blue pill? Right. And she takes it, and then she just starts getting really sad and starts crying. It's like, we did it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Uh, Chris Cooper does have this, like, monologue where he talks about how you can't have happiness without a little bit of sadness. You're right, yeah. Like, you need the sadness to contrast with the happiness. Yeah. Which is, you know, I, I usually like it when comedy groups get a little... Serious. Serious. and or, It's really hard to take this serious, though. Yeah, but this movie is not the, the vessel. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, we cut. We end the movie inside of Mrs. Herdicure's bad nightmare, which is the time she brought her grandson to the fair, and he flew away. <laughs> A bunch of with balloons. a bunch of balloons and was in the sky for two days <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's how the movie ends yeah we, we get like the little like uh, that's all folks um, circle around the kid on the balloons yeah and the Croatian cab driver is just like he Narrate. came down two days later he was fine he was fine bye and the movie ends yeah and that's uh, Kids in the Hall Brain Candy and that's Kids in the Hall Brain Candy um there, there, I, there's not that much to delve into I was going to say, here. do you have any post text for this movie? Like how it did? I, mean, or? I didn't, because I didn't read anything about this movie. Because apparently you had some sort of surprise for me. Keep talking. Um, uh, to, I mean, I read that this, um, I mean, this did, this does not do well, is the fact of the matter. Uh, it right. had $8 million budget. It starts doing something weird. Uh, it makes $2.6 million, um, <clears> which <throat> is less than, which is like, only a little over the fourth of its budget or right yeah which is not a good outcome for this movie um it's very much caused by the issue that you brought up with cancer boy um the group has expressed you know kids in the hall to this day kind of now say that they should have cut cancer boy out of the movie because it might have helped because it torpedoed release. their future prospects yeah um just for their you know <coughs> they stayed true to their craft but it might have cost them yeah from an artistic standpoint, I'm glad that they like stuck to their guns on it, but yeah. I understand why they would have some hesitation. Yeah. Um, this movie gets mid range reviews. This is notoriously one of the big disagreements on the Siskel and Ebert show. Really? Funny enough. Really? Uh, Gene Siskel gave this movie three and a half stars. No uh, shit. Roger Ebert gave this um, like one star <laughs> or something along those wow. lines. Wow. And they got into a hefty argument about it on their show. That's got to be interesting. Roger Ebert said the words, um, it is awful, terrible, dreadful, stupid, idiotic, unfunny, labored, forced, painful, bad. Did not laugh once. Siskel said, audacious, clever, and very funny. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. We, it does read as that kind of movie that would cause yeah. like certain people to like it and certain people to despise yeah. it. Like there's no in between. There's no, there's people, someone does not walk away from this movie being like, yeah, hey, it was fine. Yeah, they, the the poor box office returns of this movie do kind of the final nail in the coffin for yes. Kids in the Hall for a little bit. They take a four-year break from working together. Um, on the DVD of this, um, the DVD, they expressed that they had some mixed feelings about the final movie, um, about, like, you know, the Cancer Boy stuff, just the actual making of the movie. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. Is it my turn? Yeah, sure. All right. So when when Amazon Prime rebooted the yeah. kids in the hall their first episode they had a phenomenal opening yes that i have to show you and that's why i brought this rig so we can live watch and listen to it to get jeff's full reaction yes okay. are you ready to watch the opening scene and here's the thing i have it rigged into a separate channel so if we get into any copyright problems i can cut it out so quickly but i'm gonna let it play and i'm gonna let it yeah. play in our episode yeah but I'm going to have it so you can watch and also yes, I'm listen watching, to it. I'm watching. All right. This is the opening scene to the Amazon Prime 2022 reboot of Kids in the Hall. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are ankle weights. People used to run in them. Builds up your knee muscles. Uh -huh. Oh, this looks fun. Oh, it is. This looks fun. <laughs> oh, it isn't. Are these the same hilarious kids in the hall from the early 90s? No. These are the rage-filled kids in the hall in the mid-90s. It's a garage sale with <laughs> a video a cassette of no kids knows. in the hall brain Some candy. Some say this movie was dry-heaved into existence because of a dark deal with the devil. Others say it was laundering coke money. Either way... Reviews were mixed at best. Sounds good. How much? One dollar. Earth money. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say earth money? Yes, maybe. What I meant was your money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Problem Child too. <laughs> no. Let's get brain candy. Oh. <laughs> What just happened? With this dollar, 
Kids in the hall, Brain Candy has now broken even. <laughs> broken the <curse>! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, no! Oh, no! The curse is broken! No, Dexter! So we all agree that gender parody is a good thing. <laughs> oh no! no. It's Dawn it. from the back. first Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. You can't. That's the point. Really? I, I thought this was a think tank. Oh Dawn, Dawn, I think you're really going David to David Foley no, back. back as Marv. Brain Candy has made its money back. <laughs> I knew it would. <laughs> no, I thought it would take a week, wound up taking 30 years. Well, you're never wrong, Don. Yeah, well, time is elastic. Frank Zappa taught us that. Oh. Uh, well, ladies, thank you for getting the conversation started. Uh, you'll each get a Roarator fanny pack on your way out. They're back. You know? Roarator, the same name of the, <laughs> yeah, uh, the company. Of course, Don. With uh, me. Pharmaceutical or... company from the course, first brain, brain Candy movie. This is just a continuation of Brain Candy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like listing all these things like, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same thing. I'm like, it's just a continuation. The audience is loving this. Yes. <laughs> It's never easy to finance a film. In the case of Brain Candy, it was a co-pro between the Canadian government and the devil. Ah, <laughs> you know, like, you know, play this at the uh, beginning of the context is corner. And the kids are back. Ah, well, who's financing this time? The devil again? Well, sort of. Amazon. <laughs> oh, uh, I've opened a can of worms, haven't I? Well, Don, only time will tell. No, I'm telling you, I've opened a can of worms. I'm on a high-protein diet. Where's my worm wrangler? Uh, what about the kids? Oh, we've got our best man on that right now. The bathroom guy! <laughs> <laughs> it's the same one! This is like 27 years later. Yeah. Uh, I love this so much. How much more of this is there? Just watch. Uh, I'm, I'm watching. Oh, there's a giant grave with kids in the hall written on it. They're excavating the grave. Kids in the Hall TV show, 1989 and 1995. <laughs> it's the original five member <laughs> cast. All waking up. <laughs> oh, my oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Who are you people? It's me, Mark. Scott, is that you? Oh my god, if you have to ask, it can't be good. Am I still the cute one? Um, <laughs> sort of. Um, guys, I knew we should have cryogenically frozen our bodies. Yeah. Or even just our faces. Oh. Or even just your hair. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it. And that's the beginning of the show. I love that. That was actually <laughs> funnier than the movie. <laughs> but... It's so amazing. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> should we just watch the kids in the hall? Like I kind of feel like it's probably a good show. Like I kind of want to watch it after that opening. Yeah, that's a great opening. That's a phenomenal opening and even they like, have, still have great comedic timing. And it's even better when you know the context of yeah. brain candy which we have just provided for you, yeah, the audience. For you. Yeah, um so I'm going to tell the audience go go stop listening to us and just go watch brain candy. I mean, or, no, go watch no, kids no, in the no, hall. No, don't, don't watch brain candy. Go watch the Amazon Prime 2022 reboot, The Kids in the Hall. I, I think I might actually go and watch it after this. Yeah. Just, you know, it's back to their original form. Like, it, every episode is just a skit. That's all it is. Yes. It's not like a through line thread yeah. of a story, which I think will probably be more digestible. It'll be beneficial. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Jeff, I just, I really yeah, wanted to. For, thank you for doing that. <laughs> I wanted to show that to you. I knew that would be your type of humor right there. That was exactly <laughs> my type of humor. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. I think we're ready to bounce this puppy out, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, right, well, thank, thank you, you all folks for, for listening. listening. Uh, to kid this episode on Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. 
hope you got some uh, context that you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we got. Jeff is like shell shocked. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I like that. That was really funny. All right. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. I, um, it, that retroactively made me like the movie more. I know, right? Yeah. It kind of made me like the movie a little bit more. Because I'm like, oh, these, this they is. They brought Don back. This, is, this movie's kind of like. They brought Bathrobe Guy back. Well, this, we didn't even talk about Bathrobe Guy. No, we didn't. There's a guy he walks around this movie dressed in a bathrobe. Yeah. Um, but like. That's all he does. That this movie is kind of like a painful subject for them, and it's good that they kind of exercise themselves of the demons of it. Well, not only in, in the, the same fact, way that we have, right? And not only in the fact that the movie didn't do well, but the fact that it was during it was made during a time where their group dynamic was sort of at the end of its course. Yeah, I mean, I'd asked you not to read the trivia pieces, but I'm sure it's not surprising to hear that. A lot of them had creative differences with each other. A lot of them were at the stage of their careers. They were going separate ways and going to do other things. This is sort of like their sort of crowning jewel final piece of their time together as a group. And it's sad that it ended in the way that it did, but also happy to know that they can take that and utilize it as a funny bit in their next stage. Yeah. And now they get to like reclaim this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really nice. I agree. But anyway, so yeah. if you like this movie, please, you know, give us a good rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube. You're a little shell shocked, so I feel like I should probably Stuart's do the outing. Stuart's gonna outro. do the outing. Um, the- you can uh, find us at um, you can find us on Instagram at Travolting Pod. Uh, you can Twitter as well. Twitter as well. You can email us any questions, well, comments, wait, concerns wait. at Can Travolting I can Pod. I interject for one second? Twitter as well, provided even... it is still around when this episode airs. Oh, yeah, that's true. We have to start making that we disclaimer. Have to, we have to start making that disclaimer. We, we had to start making that disclaimer like an episode ago. Yeah. Well, we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> it's, it's, well, the episode came out, and we're fine. <coughs> yeah. Uh, continue. Um, you can email us any questions, uh, comments, concerns at travoltingpod at gmail.com. You can find Jeff on... Twitter, Instagram at Jeff W. Sweeney. You can find me on Instagram at Stuart Elmer 85. Special thanks to Rebecca Johnson for our graphic design and Michael Van Boding Smith for our theme music, which is taking you out. Have a great week, folks. Join us next week for 1996 Mrs. Winterborn. Yes. See you all next Have a week. Great week, folks. Bye.